Hi, I'm Noel from Boxtail Soup Theatre Company and uh, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make one of the frames for the puppets that we're building currently. So if you've seen any of our vlogs, you've seen the way that we've been building stuff and um, I'm going to show you the process that we're using to build the puppets that we're making at the moment. So first of all, on the desk in front of me, I've just got a few um, essential bits and pieces. I've got a pair of scissors, a ruler, I've got a uh, craft knife and a pencil and sellotape and then I've pre-prepared some of my bits of card. So the card that we've used is, uh, you can use any card that's relatively flexible, um, cereal boxes, stuff like that. We've used a pizza box card here, that's our favourite stuff to use. And what I've done with these is I've pre-prepared uh, a few things that I'm going to need. So I've cut a few strips from the boxes that are about I guess about, about a centimetre wide. Um, doesn't really matter, doesn't have to be precise, but roughly. And then I've got a lot of thinner strips here that are probably about half a centimetre or so. I've also got what's going to be my mouthpiece and my bottom jaw. And then I've got a few little pieces here where I've just folded a very small piece into a little L and I'm going to use those to join a couple of things together. And then finally, I've got my little cardboard tube here, which helps me to um, roll the piece of card into the shapes that I need. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to cut out the piece that's going to make your jaw. For me, the right length is about 10 centimetres and obviously Antonia has to use these as well so it, it works for both hands um, so it's not as if it's exactly to my hand size. I've worked that out roughly by looking at where I'd place my fingers if I was going to operate the puppet and try to leave myself a comfortable little bit of overlap so that I can easily get my fingers in to where the loops are going to be but I've also got a little bit of space at the front so my fingers aren't pushing right up against the front of the puppet's mouth and also they're not way too far back. Um, so all I've done there then is measured about 10 centimetres and then I found where the middle line is, I've cut that piece out as a square and then I've just rounded the two ends off so that we get a nice curved front to the face and then I fold that in half. The next thing you're going to want to do is get a couple of little strips like this and these are going to make the loops that you'll put your fingers in in order to actually operate the mouth. So I'm just going to roll the first one up for the top here and for me I like to be able to make sure that I can get my two middle fingers into that loop and the other two go on the other side. So I'll just try and get it to the right sort of size without getting too harsh a fold in it anywhere. I've got a bit of a problem with that little bit there, but that should be fine. So I reckon I can get my fingers comfortably in there. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to stick that down right there. So that gives us our top loop for the jaw. And you can afford to be quite rough with the tape because ultimately it's going to be covered with um, papier-mâché so you're not going to see any of it in the end and the papier-mâché itself is going to hold it together. So the tape is really only temporary while you're actually building the puppet. And then for the bottom one I want to be able to get my thumb through it. So I'm just going to roll that up like so and then look for something that easily lets me get my thumb in and out. And once I'm happy with that I'll also take that into shape as well. So, you've got your top and bottom loops for the jaw of the puppet. And now we're just going to stick them onto this jaw. Um, again, we can be pretty, uh, pretty approximate with it. Just wherever feels comfortable. But what I normally look for is to go about, about halfway between halfway sort of front to back so that it's landing more or less in the middle. So I'm just going to sort of I've put my tape on already so that I can stick that down as soon as I press it down. I'm just going to find roughly what I think is the middle there and then I'm going to push that on there like so. That looks pretty good to me. Feels comfortable. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the thumb loop on the bottom. I'm just going to slot my little piece of tape through there pop my thumb into it, find out where it feels roughly comfortable 
and then once I'm happy I'll stick that down and I'm able to operate that with my finger and thumb. I will just pop a little bit of extra tape on here because we tape down a curve and we put the tape through it. Sometimes it has a tendency to, to lift up. We don't want it to do that while we're making the rest of the frame. So I'm just going to put a little bit of extra on the front and back to hold it in place. And that's the basis of our jaw. So we're now ready to start putting on the other pieces for the frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these little L brackets, these little pieces of card, just tiny little strips that I've cut out and folded in half. And I'm going to stick them, I'm going to stick three of them for now, along the front of my jaw. And they're just going to help me to stick on what's going to be the front of the puppet's upper lip. So I want to be able to stick a piece on along the front there, and I want it to follow the curve of the jaw. So I'm going to use these to make sure that I've got something to stick it to, and also something that means it's actually going to follow the line of the jaw. So I'm just going to put three on for now. Really, the number that you use kind of depends on the width of the puppet's mouth. Um, this one is, you know, I wouldn't say it's particularly wide or particularly narrow. So I'm just going to pop three on and that should be enough for now. I can always add more if I need to. And uh, I think also with this one, because I've got a bottom jaw like this, I'm going to stick a couple on the bottom as well. So I'm ready to put that on in a moment too. So I'll just stick these on here. And I'm going to go for the same thing. I'm just going to pop three of them on there. Very handy, of course, to have a tape dispenser. Highly recommended. Otherwise you kind of have to pre-cut lots of little strips of tape in order that you don't have to keep putting stuff down and picking up the scissors. Okay, so we've got our little brackets on the top jaw and on the bottom. So now I'm going to put on a piece that's going to go across the back of the jaw and it's going to establish the rough width of the head. So I'm going to stick it on across the back like so. Now, in order to make sure that I don't have more left over on one side than the other, I'm just very roughly going to mark where the middle of this piece of card is, so that I know I'm sticking it roughly in the middle. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it straight along the back of the jaw there. So I just want it to be roughly in the middle. And then I'm just going to put a couple of pieces of tape on to hold it in place along the back and that goes in place like so. Lovely. Now in order to define the width of the head or at least the width of the head at about this point I'm going to fold these up. Um, again I don't, I don't have an exact design in my head I'm really just kind of I've got an idea for what I want the face to look like roughly, but I'm really just working uh, kind of ad hoc. Um, if, obviously, you want to build something specific, I would normally measure or compare it to another puppet. I was building um, uh, some brothers and sisters um, earlier last week, so obviously I was making sure that the older brother was a little bit bigger and making sure I got the measurements right for that. But for this one, I think around about there should do the trick. And then so that it's even, I'm just going to very roughly measure how far out I've gone on that side so that I can do the same thing here. That was about four centimetres, so I'm going to go for about four centimetres there. And then I'll just fold that up on this side as well. Like so. Okay. So you should be able to see now that We've got the, the jaw in there, that will be the bottom jaw, and this is going to define the width of the head itself. So I'm now going to get two more of these strips, and I'm just going to curl them both, so that I can make them into the top of the head that's going to give us the actual shape of the outline of the face. So I'm just going to give these a little curl here. You don't have to use a tube 
to curl the card. You can use your fingers, of course, but I just find that it makes it quite a nice, smooth, even curve. So I'm going to stick these on um, either side like this. Stick these on here. And the other one goes on the other side. And the reason I'm using two is because although it fits a relatively small puppet and it very much depends on the length of the strips that you've got, so obviously the size of the box that you've cut them out from, but the reason I'm using two in this case is that I know that usually these strips are the full length of these pizza boxes and you usually need more than that length in order to make the shape of the head. And using two like this allows me a little bit of um, room to sort of pull it in or let it out and decide exactly how big or how small I want that head to be. Okay, so I think I'm going to go yeah, somewhere around, around that sort of size. That looks good. Maybe I'll give him a little bit more so I can give him a little bit of a little bit of shape. Yeah, I think that'll do it. So I'm going to tape it in place there. Like so. And again, you should now be able to see that we've got what will be the outline of the, uh, the sides of the head. So now I'm going to use these little brackets uh, that I put on earlier along with another one of these centimetre wide strips, more or less. Maybe it's a little more than that. And I'm going to put this on as the puppet's front top lip. So in order to do that I'm going to start by sticking it on at the front there and then it's going to wrap around like so. Now maybe because we've made this relatively wide that actually this might need to be a little bit longer. I'm not sure actually, I'm just going to... I think I'll, I'll, I'm going to go for this and I'm going to stick a little bit extra on if needs be. Yeah, I think I might need a little bit extra there. I don't know. No, I might be all right actually. Um, so I'm going to stick that on in the middle just there. It's a little bit fiddly obviously because you want to actually cover the top of the little bracket so that it's not going to come off. And then actually that should just about reach. So it's going to give us a particular sort of shape, which is fine. I'm quite happy with that. So all I'm going to do then, I'm going to take the end of this here onto the side of the head. And again, in a lot of cases here, you know, I'm not being too neat with the tape work because I know that it's not going to be visible in the end and it is going to be covered up. So we're not relying on the tape to hold it there permanently and just want it to hold in place until I'm able to cover the frame. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side here. Just going to stick that there. Okay, so that forms the sort of upper lip of our puppet there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these thinner strips. Um, it doesn't have to be one of these thinner ones. You could use one of the thicker ones, but the reason I'm going to use this is because I like them to, to have, certainly when they're this size, not to have too thick a bridge uh, or a, a kind of the top of the nose to be too wide. So I'm going to use one of these thinner ones. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to connect the top of that lip 
with the top of the head. So I'm going to try and find the right sort of size and shape for the front angle of the face. So I'm going to first of all stick it at the front here in the middle of the jaw. And then I'm going to roughly try and judge where I want the face to stick out to and then I'm going to use that sliding back and forth to give me the right sort of shape that I want. So I think that looks about good. So I'm going to stick that right there. Like so. So, having stuck that on the top there, I'll trim off the excess. And then, again, you can see that we've now got the front of the puppet's head there. Now, you could go one of two ways now. You could stick on the bottom jaw first and get a sense of how big the head's going to be as a whole. I think I've got a pretty good idea of that. I'm quite happy with the sort of size that that looks like it's going to be. So <clears throat> instead, I'm going to put a few pieces across the front here to give me something to build on and also to give me an idea of where the eyes are going to sit. If you've ever done any um, anatomical drawing, drawing or if you did GCSE art or anything like that, then it always surprises me that when you're sketching out a human face, the eyes are actually supposed to be about 50% of the way down. So between the top of the head and the bottom, the eyes actually sit just above the halfway mark. Uh, whereas actually, you know, you kind of imagine them sitting closer to the top of the head. Um, so you have to be careful that you leave enough room, because otherwise they look a little bit weird if you, if you put the eyes in the wrong place, unless you want them to be very caricatured. So I think I'm going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go about there for the eyes. So in order to do that, I'm going to stick this bit on about here. And that's just going to give me, it gives me somewhere to build on when I'm actually putting on the papier-mâché, obviously, because you need, you know, you need the structure for the front of the face. But it also starts to give me an idea of where all the features sit. So we now start to get more into the detail of the face. So we'll take that one on that side like so. Okay, so I'm now going to leave a little gap for the eyes to sit in and then I'm going to put another one across the top so that we start to kind of leave a space where we can imagine the eyes being. So one more of these across the top. I'm going to sit that one mm. yeah, around about there, I think that's good. That should work. I'm going to stick that in here. A little bit awkward again to stick these on, but it's only temporary, so so long as they hold until you've finished and you can start to cover the frame, it'll be fine. That looks good. And you might notice that, obviously, it doesn't have any nose at the moment, but we're going to put that on afterwards. In fact, in some cases, depending on how big you want the nose to be, it might be wisest to cover most of it first and then gradually build the nose up. So we'll see how we get on. I think I'm actually going to put a frame on for the nose for this one. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now, for the eyes, in order that they have somewhere to sit in, what we want to do is create a little bit of a socket for them. And to do that, we're just going to use some of these narrow pieces, but we're going to have to give them a particular sort of bend. 
So I've given them a little fold at the top and I've done that so that I can stick it onto the middle there. And then I'm just going to fold it, I'm just going to bend it rather, into a nice curve. It means I'm going to be able to stick it in and have it sit as a little socket like that. So I think there should be about right, that would do it. I'm going to need one more of those for the other side. And before I stick these in, once I've got an idea of roughly how wide I want the eyes to sit, I'm actually going to give them another piece to rest on. So, yeah, that should do it about there. Good, so I'm just going to put those aside for a moment. And then I'm going to take one of these pieces and I'm going to give myself a little bit for those to rest on. I think I can cut this in half. I can use one half for either side. Yeah, that should do it. So I'll stick it on down by the jaw first. And then following the curve, stick it on up here at the top. I'll just trim that off so I can fold the tape over easily. Okay, that's good. And we want roughly the same thing on the other side. The other nice thing to remember, and the good thing about working in this way with card and with papier mache, is that even if you do make a mistake, I'll have to pick that up later. Even if you do make a mistake, it's pretty easy to correct. If you have to cut a piece out, or if you've actually stuck something on with papier mache, and you find that it's sticking out too much, or you don't like the shape of it, it's so simple to cut it off, or even to resize one of these pieces to just cut that off there and then make it a little smaller or stick it in a, bit, a little extra bit. So once you remove a little bit of the anxiety of kind of getting it right first time, it means that you're actually probably a little bit freer to, to work as you go and, you know, try and make things, try and make things look the way you want to look with a little bit of experimentation without feeling like, oh, I've got to get this right first time. It's got to look absolutely spot on. So now I'm going to stick these um, these eye pieces that I folded up before into the middle. Again, it gets a little bit fiddly, but you just have to push through. This is the point where you kind of need little elf fingers. So now I've got pieces stuck on at the side that the eye pieces will rest on and then I've stuck these two pieces for the eyes to this middle bar here and I don't know how clearly you can see but again the tape work there really isn't very tidy I've just done it very quickly but all I need it to do is hold in place until I can actually start to cover it. So now with these eye pieces I'm going to sort of push them in to a point where I feel they've gone deep enough you don't want them too deep because you obviously you'll give the, the character incredibly deep set eyes unless that's what you're going for. Um, so I'm going to go for about there and once I'm happy with that I'm just going to give that a little fold so that I know where that is. Cut that off at the end and then I'm going to tape it to this bar on the side here. Same on the other side, and I'm going to try and make it as equal as I can, but again, it's something that you can correct a little bit later, so don't worry too much about it. It's not a completely uh, precise science. Put a little fold in it, cut off the extra bit there, and then take that on like so. Okay. So now we can see roughly where the eyes are going to sit. Um, I'm also going to use the extra little bits 
that I cut off to give myself um, a cross piece. Again, that's more to do with having stuff to be able to build on when you're doing the actual papier-mâché. So very simply, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Fold it at the top so I've got somewhere to stick it on. And just stick it on there like so. That should do us. And then once it meets the other piece of card, I'm happy with how deep it's sitting. Give it a little fold. I'm going to cut off the excess. And then I'm going to stick that down as well. Same on the other side. Quick fold. Stick that on the top there. Roughly in the middle. And then once I'm happy with how far it's sitting in, Give it a little curve, cut off the excess, and then I'll stick that down as well. So now we've got two little frames, two little places for our eyes to sit, and we've got somewhere to actually build in with when we put the papier-mâché on. So we can move on now probably to the bottom jaw. Um, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the top. I'm going to stick that onto these little uh, these little brackets that we've got here. So I've pre-cut our, our jaw. And again, if it turns out to be slightly too big or it's not quite the right size, I can always cut it down or I can stick a little bit extra on. So for now, I think this should be fine. Yep, looks good. So I'm going to stick that on as centrally as I can get it. That should do it. Okay, and now on the inside, where we've got this loop, we want something to support the jaw so that it doesn't just flap back and forwards and it's not weak. Even when we cover it with papier mache, it will still potentially be a point of weakness there. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take one of these wider strips again and uh, I'm just going to stick it to the back of the jaw and then to the top of the loop. So I think it wants to sit there. Put a little bit of tape on there so it'll stick straight away. I'm going to judge it just by sort of sliding it along the top of the uh, top of the loop there. That's probably about right. So I'm going to press that down there. And now if you're not happy with the angle of the jaw, you've got a little bit of leeway now to pull it back and forwards. So if you wanted it to stick in a little bit more, you could pull it right back and tape it there. If you want it to jut out a little bit more, you can push it forwards a little bit. I'm happy with it being sort of following the line of the face like that. So I'm going to take mine about there. That will do it. Just going to pop a little bit on the other side to keep it steady. And then, as ever, I'm going to cut off the excess there. And that just means that that's now much more stable and it's not going to wobble back and forwards. Okay. The last little bit before we're ready to start putting the um, papier mache on it is to put some little uh, side parts of the bottom of the face on here just to fill out the bottom of the face. And again, we're going to do that pretty simply. I'm going to use some of these thin strips here. I'm going to give them a little bit of a curve. Then I'm basically just going to make a couple of triangles down at the bottom. So first of all, I'm going to I'm going to come in next to the jaw here like this. 
stick one on about there. I don't want it to be too close to the jaw because this is a difficult thing to judge, but you want to make sure that wherever you put it, you're not going to prevent the mouth from opening. In some cases, we use that to stop the mouth at a certain point. Um, so that it'll, actually, it'll actually run into the, those bits in order to stop the mouth opening too wide, which can look equally odd. Um, so I've got that first one stuck on there. I'm going to try and match that, stick the other one on exactly the same sort of place. So I reckon that's about there. Again, you can always build it up with papier-mâché or cut it back if you put it in slightly the wrong place. So don't worry too much about it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another piece on at the back corner here that's going to meet up with it. And that's going to give it that nice curve at the bottom as well. So once I've got the, uh, the sort of angle that I think would be right, I don't want it to come all the way down here. So I'm going to tilt it up a little bit so that it's going to meet it roughly where the bottom of the jaw is. I'm going to take that in place. Then I'm going to find the curve that I want, how much I want them to pull in or pull out. I think something like that would be good. So I'm going to take that there. I'm just going to put a quick bit on to hold it in position so that I can then Cut off the extra bits, put a little bit on the bottom, and you can see we've started to build this side of our face there. Same thing on the other side. So I'm going to put this on here, try and find the angle that I want that to sit at. So I want it to meet the bottom of the jaw roughly like that. So I'm going to stick that about there. And then, once I'm happy with where it sits, how far in or how far out, back there I think, I'm going to stick that with a quick bit temporarily. Cut off the excess. And then stick a little bit on the bottom just to hold it in place. Chip. So now we've got almost a complete face. Just for the benefit of this um, tutorial, I'm going to stick something on for the nose. Um, whether I keep it or not, I'm not sure yet. But in order to do that, again, I'm just going to take one of these thin strips. You probably want a distance of about one to two fingers at the bottom where it meets the lip. So you want to leave that cap for the top there. So in order to do that, I'm going to fold at the bottom, fold this strip, stick it on right about there. That looks pretty good. And now it's really a question of bending this into approximately the shape of nose that you'd like. So. I think that's probably a little bit big for this guy. I don't want to be too cruel. So you can work the card as much or as little as you need to. Uh, that looks quite sweet. I'm going to go for that. Again, quick bit on there to hold it in place so that I can cut off the excess. Take that out later. And Put another bit on there just to hold it in place. So now we've got a little bit of a nose as well. We could have built that up with papier-mâché but it means that now I've got something rough to build on uh, to start the shape of the nose and then I'll probably build it out more on the sides. Again if you really wanted to um, you could add in a circle at the bottom. I'll just show you roughly what I mean. So you could do something like, yeah, that 
seems about right. Something like this. And uh, this would start to give you the shape of the side of the nose. But it really depends on how much you want to do in card and how much you want to add in with papier-mâché. The good thing about adding it with a papier-mâché is that you can build it up slightly more gradually, so you don't risk going overboard, um, where we've had a few cases with these puppets so far even, where I've probably made things a little bit too big in card and we've ended up cutting them back. So, you should be able to see there now that that's given the shape of the side of the nose as well, um, which, you know, like I say, it can be helpful to build that out in card. It can be better to do it in papier-mâché, but I just thought I'd give you an example. And uh, this guy now is ready, really, to have his first covering of paper. Um, that won't provide all the detail, but it will certainly give it some strength, help the whole thing hold together, and then we can start to, to add some of the fine details. I hope that's been helpful, and uh, I hope it was clear. If you've got any questions, please do let us know in the comments. Um, if you make any, we'd absolutely love to see them, so do like send us a link or share them on Instagram with us or uh, on Facebook or something like that, that would be brilliant. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all that stuff, leave us a comment, it helps us get the videos seen by more people, that would be great. Um, otherwise, uh, hopefully, thanks for watching, um, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video when we get this guy covered.